No more eggheads on Twitter. So. Well, it's still, in, in, it's in, still in have mine up here. Yeah. Well, I have my egghead <laughs> up here. My big milk bed. Oh, now, now. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, what's going on today in sports? I tell you, we got basketball, we got racing, all that good stuff. The men's NCAA Division I basketball title will be decided over the next couple of days in the Valley of the Sun. As the Final Four is in Glendale, Arizona, we'll have an update coming up. Plus, on the women's side of the ledger, big upset in Big D. As we look back at last night's surprising win by Mississippi State over UConn and Dallas. Stick and stay, please. No, WFXR Sports with Jermaine Farrell. Hey, good evening, everyone. From 68 to 4, that's where we stand in the race for the men's Division I college basketball title. The Final Four is being played in Arizona. The first semifinal features Final Four first-timers, South Carolina and Gonzaga, with the nightcap having last year's runner-up, North Carolina, playing in their NCAA record 20th Final Four, taking on an Oregon team that hasn't been to the Final Four since 1939. Well, Gonzaga will play in the men's final as they beat South Carolina 77 to 73. Now the North Carolina Tar Heels right now, they lead the Oregon Ducks in the second half 56 to 49. So the winner, they'll play Gonzaga. Now in the final seconds of overtime last night between Mississippi State and UConn, tied at 64. Morgan William buries the shot, knocking out UConn. Yes. UConn is down. Celebrations for everyone, including Dallas Cowboy quarterback and former Mississippi State star. You'll see him, Dak Prescott. He goes nuts. UConn's 111 game winning streak is history. I got enough space. I jumped up and I just made the shot. When I made the shot, I was in shock. I'm still in shock. I'm over here like, man, I just won the game. Obviously, uh, you know, when you get to this point, in the season uh, uh, and you lose, it's just, um, uh, it's, it's the worst feeling imaginable. Now Mississippi State and South Carolina will play for the women's title in Dallas tomorrow night. Let's go to LA, Clippers and Lakers. Roanoke native JJ Redick doing things for the Clippers today. Chris Paul will find JJ Redick for the triple 17 nothing Clippers. More J.J. Redick, long range, yes, dialing up another triple. And then Redick will find he can pass as well, hooking up with Blake Griffin for the easy jam session. Great passing as the Clippers, behind 19 points from J.J. Redick, defeat the L.A. Lakers, giving Clippers coach Don R Doc Rivers his 800th victory, 115 to 104. Coming up, we roll down to Martinsville for the first of two races this weekend at the Speedway. Stick and stay for highlights at the Camping World Truck Series next. WFXR Sports. Welcome back, everybody. This time of the year in our area, we have NASCAR racing at the Martinsville Speedway. The first of two weekend races coming up. Now, today's race, the Camping World Truck Series, turned to shine at the Alpha Energy Solutions 250. The winner is going to get a grandfather clock. Chase Elliott looking for said grandfather clock. Also looking for his first win there. Let's go to lap 16. Troubles in the pits. Cody Coughlin jumps the gun, causing a member of his pit to tumble and in the process leaving the wrench there. That would be a pit penalty. He would finish 19th. Lap 148. Austin Hill also having problems. Drives off with the fuel tank attached. That's a no-no. You can't do that. Spilling fuel everywhere. They had to go get it out of the pits. That would be a pit penalty. He'd finish 10th. 70 laps to go. The leader, Christopher Bell, trying to get outside there, but he gets passed inside by Elliott and Johnny Sauter. And on the final lap, it's Elliott holding off Sauter in just long enough action to get the win and his first win ever at the paperclip in the trucks. Now, with Elliott's win, he's looking to carry momentum into tomorrow's STP 500. It's easy to win at the paperclip. April Fool. Now, Elliott will be on the outside of row one. Kyle Larson is on the pole. Marshall's one of the tracks that can take some time to master. And these drivers talk about their Martinsville experience. Yeah, Martinsville, uh, I'm glad to have a 29-point lead coming into Martinsville because uh, this is a – my my worst racetrack we go to probably even though we ran you know well last year um it's 
I've gotten better at each time, but it's still not a, a track where I'm extremely comfortable at. I can go fast, you know, on, in qualifying or early on tires, but uh, I struggle at saving my stuff. So, um, got to get better at that. You know, if we could get a, a top five or a top ten here, um, that'd be a huge success. Uh, we finished third you know, last year. Um, you never know. Two of our cars are so good right now. Maybe we could contend for a win. Yeah, for me, it took being lapped by Tony Stewart to figure it out. Um, and then I followed him and, and got myself back on the lead lap and, uh, and had a decent finish. Uh, I came here and tested with the 24 and had Jeff you know, working diligently with me to figure it out and it didn't click. Looking at the data, um, he'd hop in my car and go faster. <laughs> it was just frustrating. And then it finally clicked. And it's one thing to create short run speed, but um, there are some little things here in the rhythm that can just chew up tires and wear the tires out and make you, make you drop back way too fast. So. Um, you know, it's, it's been great because I feel like when you're, once you understand how to get around here, um, it's something that you can keep for a long time, regardless of tire generation, a car, um, you know, the test of time, it really stands up here on this small track more. You can be off on arrow. You can be off on a few little things here and there and, and the driver can kind of overcome, um, any of those deficits with, with, you know, technique at this racetrack, um, you know, you really have to have a good setup, and I think that you know guys that sometimes hit it, even if they're young and inexperienced, can can run well here. Um, you know, Kyle's actually ran up front here, I think, in the last few races. Uh, so I would expect, you know, his cars have gotten faster over the off season. Uh, so I would expect uh, he'd be a, a challenger for sure. Uh, Martinsville is one of those places I think every driver wants to win at. Everyone wants to have that clock in their house, you know, and um, you know that's something that uh, it's very special. Uh, every time I, I come in this room and I, I look around at these pictures on the wall and I think, man, this place has been around for a long time and a lot of uh, legends have won here. And uh, similar to Daytona, you want to be that guy that can say, hey, I've won at Daytona and hey, I've won at Martinsville or Darlington. It's one of those very historic racetracks that you want to, as a race car driver, you know, click that off on the on the bucket list and say, hey, I've won at Martinsville. Um, it's a very special thing. It's a very challenging, very hard thing to do. Uh, we haven't done it yet. Um, we've come awful close, but uh, this is definitely one of those tracks you want to click off. And we'll have complete coverage of the STP 500 tomorrow on WFXR News First at 10. Let's look at sports on this wonderful Saturday. More WFXR News First at 10 coming up on the other side. All right, here's a check at your seven day forecast once again before we say good night tonight. Uh, tomorrow, expecting temperatures to be on the cool side first thing, but then we'll warm up nicely as we go through the rest of the afternoon. Mid to upper 60s expected. Next rain chances moving in on Monday could linger in a part of Tuesday and a quick break on Wednesday before our next storm system comes in after that. So one on the heels of another with those rain chances. So we'll need a jacket tomorrow morning at Martinsville. Yes, yeah, something you can peel off throughout the day uh, since it will warm up. All right, good to know. Thank you so much for joining us. Enjoy the rest of your weekend.